G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to be installing Linux Mint 20.2 in a dual boot situation with Windows 10 under UEFI mode. So let's get on with that. So here we are in the boot screen of Linux Mint. Let's boot the Linux Mint live desktop. And here we are in the live desktop of Linux Mint. So what we're going to do is we're going to install Linux Mint in UEFI mode and just use the installer only. So let's get on with that. So English for me. Keyboard layout for me is English US. Now here we choose to install multimedia codecs. And uh, it's best to do that because that gives you all codecs needed out of the box. Uh, multimedia codecs are required to play some video formats and to properly render some websites. Ubuntu don't install the Ubuntu restricted extras, but this one here installs the mint-meta-codex. So I believe that gives you most things. And once again, we get the um, install Linux Mint alongside Windows Boot Manager, which is what we don't want to do. We don't want Linux and Windows sharing the same bootloader. We can erase the disk and install Linux Mint. That will erase all the data and your Windows install and install Linux Mint to the whole disk. But what we want to do is something else. Let's continue that. Okay, so this is what we've got here, a breakdown up the top here. So what it's doing here is um, doesn't really break it down in colors, I must say. I think the orange color is just overall showing you what Windows has taken up and that small bit up the end here, um, but the free space is the 30 gig that we created. So it doesn't really break it down in colors even though it does along here. So that's a bit weird. So the Ubuntu installer d definitely, and even the Calamari's installer definitely break it down in colors. Linux Mint's installer is um, not that I've ever noticed before, but uh, not really breaking the colors down too well in regards to the separate partitions. So anyway, we click on the free space. We can click plus button here, just like Ubuntu, to change that, or we can double click, same thing. So first of all, we're gonna make a 512 megabyte partition. It's gonna be primary. We are under UEFI, it will be GPT partition table. So we can have more than four primary partitions. And it'll be primary, the beginning of this space, we're going to make that a FAT32 file system mount point. Oh, sorry. I did it again, didn't I? It's going to be an EFI system partition. <laughs> and then we don't have to select anything. And then we select OK. <laughs> oh, gee, I've got some bad habits there. <laughs> yes, that habit comes from using Gparted, I think. <laughs> so I don't know why it goes back up to the top. I'd it'd be nice if it uh, went back to... Um, at least the free space. And I think Calamari's went back to the free space, I think. Whereas this one doesn't. Can't remember if Ubuntu did or not. Not quite sure. So we click the plus button. This one will be a 4096 megabyte, a 4096 megabyte partition, which is exactly four gigs. It'll be primary, beginning of this space. This will be a swap area and click OK. Yeah, I don't know why it takes you back up the top. You've got to go searching for your free space again. Be nice if they could fix that. Double click that. We're going to go 20,480 megabytes, which is exactly 20 gigs. Primary, beginning of this space. We're going to make it an EXT4 file system. Got all these other options here, but EXT4 is what I use. And the mount point will be root and OK. And last of all, We'll use that existing free space, double click. Use the remaining space of that partition there. Primary, beginning of this space, it's gonna be an EXT4. And yes, you can use ButterFS, JFS, XFS. I'm not really used to any of those, so, you know, tried and true EXT4. Uh, maybe one day I'll start looking at all these other file systems, but EXT4 for me is good enough. And this one's gonna be mount point home. Now, one thing I've noticed out of all of these installs is when you're working with the installer, if you're working with an unallocated partition space, you don't get the option of formatting because it recognizes that it's unallocated. It's a brand new partition that you're creating. 
It's only when you work with G parted and you've got those existing partitions there, it then shows you format options. That, that's what I've noticed. Haven't really noticed that in the past, but making these videos really gets you to notice things, I must say. So forward slash home, click OK. And that's our partitions done. Now it's um, coloring some of these partitions here. So now you've got SDA5 is the EFI. Our Linux swap is SDA6 dark blue. SDA7 is our root partition. And SDA8 is the green one, which is our home. I don't know why that SDA is reading as EXT4. Did I partition that incorrectly? No, it's an EFI partition, so I don't, I'm not sure. See, the Windows SDA1 is reading as FAT32, but this one's reading as EXT4. That's a bit strange. Don't know what's going on there. But as you can see, our SDA7 root partition is ticked off to be formatted, and so was the home. Our SDA5 is what we're using for boot. So if device for bootloader installation will be SDA5. That's our EFI boot. And we have two different boot partitions there, SDA5 and Windows SDA1. So they're separate. So Windows and Linux are using two different bootloaders. So uh, Windows can do as many updates as it likes. It's not going to affect our Linux boot. Now what we do is install now. It'll show us the changes that we've made to the disk. And I'm happy with that. And we'll continue. Perth, Australia is my location, my real name. That'll be Colin, Mint, C-I-N for Cinnamon, V-M. I know they're long-winded names. <laughs> Username is Colin and password. You can click on the box or hit the tab key to go for the next box. And we are done and let's click continue. And that is the install complete. Let's restart now and make sure that we can dual boot with Windows 10. And there we have our options of Windows Boot Manager on SDA1 and Linux Mint. So let's boot Linux Mint. And there's the login screen for Linux Mint. Let's log in. And here we are on the desktop of Linux Mint. We always get this checked video drivers on Linux Mint. That's because of VirtualBox. And there's the welcome screen, let's close that. Let's shut Linux Mint down. Let's restart, let's make sure we can access our Windows machine. And there's our Grub Boot menu and Windows Boot Manager, let's check that out. And there's our Windows login screen, let's log into Windows. And as you can see, uh, there we are in the desktop of Windows 10. So now we'll do uh, another install using Gparted. So let's shut that down. And once again, let's boot Linux Mint boot into a live desktop. And here we are in the live desktop of Linux Mint 20.2 once again. Let's search for Gparted, there it is there. 
and we've got our 30 gig unallocated space there to work with. We'll just wait for that to stop spinning, I think. It must be still reading something. So don't forget, if you've got more than one physical disk, you can check that you can select your disk up in the top right-hand corner here. We've obviously only got one. Select the unallocated space. You can choose partition and new, or we can right click and new. So we're going to create our 512 megabyte partition for, for boot. Enter that, be a primary partition. It's gonna be EFI boot. And it's going to be a FAT32 and it's gonna be, its label will be EFI boot. Add that. See, that's what I like about Gparted. It goes straight back to the unallocated space, not back up to the top. So I like that. Let's right click that and select new. That's going to be a 4,096, 4,096 megabyte partition, which is four gigs exactly. Primary partition, that's going to be swap. We'll choose Linux swap and label that as swap. Add that. Click on that, partition and new. And once again, a 20,480 megabyte partition, which will be exactly 20 gig. Be a primary partition. It's going to be root. We're going to select ext4 out of all of those. And we'll label that again as root. Add that. And one more time, right click and select new. We'll we will use the remaining space. It'll be a primary partition. This, go, this is going to be home. It'll be an ext4 and we'll label that home as well. Add that. And that's our partitions completed. New partition one, two, three, and four. Hit the apply button and apply. And that's all operations successfully completed. Let's close that. And now you can see we've got uh, SDA 5, 6, 7 and 8 and Windows has four partitions as well. This one, this one, this one and this one. So what we need to do is right click our EFI boot, manage flags and set that for boot and it'll automatically select ESP. ESP means EFI system partition. Close that. No need to apply. I don't know why this mouse is still spinning. It's, it's been spinning right throughout the whole duration of this uh, partition creation. So I don't know what's going on there. So anyway, we've done our partitions. We can now close that. The mouse is still spinning. I don't know why I've never seen it do that before. That's install Linux Mint with our current partitions. English, for me, you can choose your language here. Continue that. English US is my keyboard, install multimedia codecs and continue. That is the um, mint-meta-codex that installs pretty much all codecs needed, I believe even maybe for reading your DVDs and CD-ROMs, I think. Um, don't quote me on that, but it does give you a lot more than what Ubuntu does, but it gives you the option of uh, installing it just in case for some legal reason in your country you're not allowed to do that. So it gives you the responsibility. Now we can choose install Mint alongside Windows Boot Manager but we all know that that probably will be sharing the same boot so we don't want to do that. Erase disk and install Linux Mint will clear off all the data on your existing hard drive including your Windows install and install Linux Mint to the whole disk. That's why we're going to do something else and continue. Okay, now we're going to be selecting the partitions that have been created. SDA5, and don't forget to write them down from Gparted if you use Gparted, which one's which, just in case you're not sure. But it is showing the type here. It's not showing the, um, the label, but it is definitely showing the type. So EFI swap EXT4 and EXT4. So this one here, we can click on change or we can double click it's an EFI system partition it knows that already we can double click we don't need to do anything with the swap cancel that we can click on this one we can click change or we can double click we're going to use this as ext4 now we've got the option of formatting because 
it's an existing partition. So now you've got control over what you do with that existing partition. I'm going to format it because I'm overriding. If, if there was an existing Linux Mint in there and I'm upgrading to a new Linux Mint, I would format that. But even though there's not an existing Linux Mint, I'm going to format anyway, um, just to give, just to clean it up with the installer itself. So that's going to be mount point root. And then we've got our SDA8, double click that. And that is going to be ext4. And it's going to be forward slash home. Now, do we format it or do we not format it? Well, this is a brand new partition, so I'm going to format it. But if you already had Linux Mint on here using a separate home and you've already got data on there and you're using the same desktop environment, do not format it. It'll pick it up as though Linux was never reinstalled. It'll be like the old system before you installed. You just want to install to root again and just continue to use your normal forward slash home. So if you've got existing documents under documents and existing music under music, um, if you don't format that, well then when you install your new Linux Mint in this root partition here, then everything, your music will still be in the music folder, your documents will still be in doc, under the documents folder and so forth. But this is a new install, brand new partition, I'm gonna format it and that'll clean it up through the installer itself. So you can see that they're both checked off to be formatted and the device for bootloader installation is going to be our SDA5. We choose that and that gives us a separate boot as opposed to the Windows boot. When there's Windows boot manager there, they're gonna be kept separate from each other. That way Windows does any updates to its boot manager, it does not affect your Linux boot manager. So you should always get a grub boot manager there on startup. So if you hover over here, you can see there's a scroll bar. I didn't see that in the earlier install, but uh, there we go. We've got all our options there. I'm just interested to know whether Linux swap, yeah, it doesn't tell me, oh, NTFS, XT4 swap. Now that one's reading as FAT32. But in the previous one, it was reading as ext4. That was really bizarre. But that was because we were using the installer itself. So maybe the installer was just reporting it incorrectly, I'd think. So we can, um, now that we've selected to use our SDA5 for boot, we can install now. Reports what we've uh, done with the disk there. And I'm happy with that. And we shall continue. Australia Perth is my location, my real name. And that'll be, my username is Colin, and choose a password. Hit the tab key for the next box. And click continue. And that is the install complete with Linux Mint uh, using Gparted to prepare the partitions. Let's restart now. Make sure we've done that correctly. I'd want to hope so after all these videos. <laughs> and there's our grub, grub boot screen. That's boot Linux Mint. And there's our login screen for Linux Mint. That's login. And that is another successful boot that is using Gparted to prepare the disk. So let's close Linux Mint, shut that down, restart. Make sure that Windows is booting as well. And that's boot Windows. And here we are at the login screen of Windows 10. Let's log into that. And that's another successful boot for Windows 10. So that is another success for dual booting Linux Mint with Windows 10 and that time using Gparted to prepare the partitions and executing the install with the Linux Mint installer. So let's shut that down. And that concludes this video of dual booting Linux Mint with Windows 10 um, using both the installer only and also preparing the partitions with Gparted and installing with the installer after that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. In my next video, which will be the last video of the dual boot Linux and Windows 10 series, I will be installing Linux Mint in legacy mode. So I'll be doing it all again. So thanks for watching and I shall see you in part 10.